Hello there, Tristan Ogilvy, right here alongside me, Cam Shea. Woo! Hello. Uh, and hello. We're here to talk about arcade games. Now, don't check your watch or adjust your sets. <laughs> it's not 1991 all of a sudden. We're talking about Japanese arcade games. Yep. The magical land of Japan where arcade gaming is still very much a thing. It's still a thing! It's massive, They're it's everywhere! The <laughs> They're actually all over the place! Uh, and with TGS uh, on the very near horizon, we thought we'd give a little primer on arcade gaming Yeah, if you're, if you're planning to go to Japan to, to head to TGS, you have to go check out the arcades. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like if you're in Akihabara, obviously, Shinjuku, Shibuya, Takeda no Baba. Did I get that right? I, it sounded of, good. Yeah, look, I took a shot at it. I'm not going to do another take. <laughs> Uh, like all over Tokyo actually there's there's arcades and they kind of vary from <clears throat> quite specialized uh, like you know some of the arcades in Akihabara are more focused on like retro shmups mm. and like uh, old school um, like iconic um, 2D fighters and that kind of stuff uh, but the vast majority of them are kind of pretty uh, pretty broad have a pretty broad appeal actually and yeah. that's I think that's why one of the reasons why they're still around. And they're, and they're also like very easy to spot. I mean, I mean the big chains like Club mm. Sega and what have you, then massive multi-story yep. uh, uh, buildings uh, that kind of stick out. And yeah, as you, as you say, a lot of the big chains are like full of all kinds of different mm. arcade games. Uh, I mean, let's talk about some of them. Like, yeah, so let's talk about the weird ones. The weird ones? <laughs> <laughs> or should we not just jump straight in? I mean, you mentioned that there's classic fighting games and stuff that you'd expect. Mm. But there's, uh, sorry, weird's the wrong word. Abnormal ones. Uh, oh, certainly that's for, worse. Is it? Yeah. Sorry, Freaky. Japan. Um, <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> well, let's go with unexpected. Yeah. I mean, for, for starters, uh, you know, there's a lot of gambling uh, mm. going on in these arcades, which may not... Uh, yeah, like gambling, like... Not, yeah, not yes, really. Yeah, like, yeah. like it's, it's less gambling than Pachinko is, but it's still kind of this weird thing where you know you pay for a bucket of like these metal coins mm -hmm. and you feed them into these machines with these it's all, and it's all very mechanical mm. uh, and you're watching them kind of go around you, they're coming off these shelves and then you're getting more of them and you're just trying to like get more of the coins but then you just eventually lose them all and it's odd yeah. and not just that i mean the gambling extends to actual robot horse racing miniature robot yeah. horse racing yeah. that you kind of gamble on yeah stuff. But then it's yeah. a bit of a sliding scale because then there's other horse racing games that have like stations set up and you've got like physical cards uh, and you can, uh, you're not just kind of racing your horse but you're rearing horses and stuff as well. I mean obviously like some of this stuff is uh, a bit impenetrable if you don't speak Japanese, which I don't, or uh, if you're not there with like a local guide. So you kind of walk in and go, what is going on here? Uh, but that's part of the fun, obviously. Mm. But yeah, you have that kind of stuff. There's always like a flaw with metal games and, and the more gambly kind of um, games. But then like, you know, the bottom floor will traditionally be like UFO catchers. Yep. Uh, there's, you know, the average arcade would have like five or six floors, honestly. Uh, so there'll be one for UFO catchers, there'll be one for like Purikura, which is like picture club stuff. The stickers and uh, things. Yeah, and many of them are like, if you're not with a female, you can't go into that floor. <laughs> Uh, for you know, obviously, there's stuff that's happened there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you have a floor of fighting games, uh, rhythm games, man. Rhythm games in Japan are yeah. still just still going. They're so huge, and you know, there's like old staples like Dance Dance Revolution and Beat Mania and uh, what is it, Guitar Freak mm -hmm. and and that kind of stuff. But then there's like newer school things like full body connect style, yep. like motion sensing. Uh, these crazy like piano games. Uh, there's one game that has like 16 buttons in like a grid array. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's just so much interesting stuff. And then obviously taiko drumming and, and, and that kind of That's thing. That's the only one I can play. But you just much. see these savants at these games uh, just doing these superhuman feats. Yeah. Uh, but the good thing is, again, it kind of scales. You know, you can hop on and do taiko drumming and it's fine. Uh, or you can try something that's like way, way more hardcore. But yeah, rhythm games still, still so huge. There's even like, do you remember the uh, iOS game Groove Coaster? Boy, do I! Yeah, that was a cool game though, yeah, right? Yeah, it was awesome, yeah. it was awesome. Well, yeah, that's in Japanese arcades now. Yeah. And so you come across these surprising things like uh, there's a Left 4 Dead game. Oh, with the mouse and keyboard. With the mouse and keyboard yeah, yeah, in, in an arcade. arcade. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, there's like a Luigi's Mansion uh, arcade game. There's Mario Kart. I mean, Mario Kart's been in Japanese arcades for a really long time. Mm. Uh, but there's just always something kind of exciting going on. And Japan, not only does each floor kind of have stuff for a different demographic, which means that, you know, you could take somebody there on a date or you could hang out with your mates or there's all these different ways to experience Japanese arcades. Um, but there's also kind of uh, 
the the test kind of site stuff still going on as well. Yeah. So uh, you know, certain arcades will be test locations for uh, unreleased games where they're just fine tuning balance and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so there's a bit of an exclusivity around arcades, and then there's still you know the the more the spectacle based ones where they're big cabinets and, and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting scene, and so much of it is geared around versus stuff as well. Yeah. You know, you have those back-to-back -back fighting machines, which are like so ever prevalent in um, in Japan. But then they also have all these um, like team-based uh, arena, like mech, like action <laughs> games and stuff. Yeah. There's just it's just so cool to see a vibrant arcade scene somewhere because you know we're in Sydney and. Doesn't really exist. Doesn't really exist anymore, yeah. and hasn't for quite hasn't some for time. For a while. Yeah. And and. and and also because it's such a, you know, these people are, 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 are go to the arcades go so regularly. They have their own system, like kind of a memory card mm. system, where you, well, it only only supports certain games, I, I assume. Yeah, there's there's a few of them, and they're kind of like there's a you know, there's a Namco one, and mm. there's so it's kind of d depending on like the manufacturer of the of the games. But some of them are cross compatible. Uh, you don't need kind of a handful if you're a regular arcade guy. I think back in the day they had games for individual right. uh, cards for individual right. games, uh, but now it's a bit broader than that. But yeah, it saves like your progress and <laughs> what you've unlocked and just stats and that kind of thing, yeah. which is pretty cool because yeah, you can just hop in, put you know, tap the card, and um, away you go. You've got access to your characters and courses or whatever it might be. Yeah, definitely the second coolest card in Japan outside of the Suica. Uh, yeah, it's not even close though. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that was just a very brief uh, look at the arcade scene in Japan. If you're heading to TGS this year, check it out. You're guaranteed to find something uh, to suit your tastes. I like to dance, so I'm, <laughs> I'm created for it. He was born for it. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Cam. Thanks, Tristan. Uh, for all things gaming, both in the home and in the arcade, stick right here, IGN.